So our last two drugs with our acronym SACS Fifth Avenue in terms of our chronotropic, inotropic, and dromotropic is our dopamine and epinephrine. So let's get into it. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. All right, let's do it. So <laughs> your dopamine, we already went over dopamine, but we can also always go over it again. Uh, in the last lecture, we went over dopamine in terms of um, dopamine's effect in raising the blood pressure. Whoa. So, <laughs> dopamine in and of itself is a vasopressor. It puts pressure on those veins, those vascular spaces, and brings blood back to the heart. Almost like if you're getting a toothpaste and you're squeezing it and we're bringing all that blood back to the heart, right? And to the lungs. But dopamine also helps renal perfusion. So we're opening up our renals, helping the kidneys be perfused. Especially with someone who is in acute renal failure who's had maybe um, too much IV contrast, and we've really caused a lot of mud, IV contrast, I call it, mud to clog up the washing machines, our kidneys. And we need to wash those washing machines out, those kidneys out, and so we needed them to be perfused very good. So we'll give someone dopamine to open up those renals, Fancy words for, we've kind of messed up our washing machines, so we need to wash it out. And we do that by giving them dopamine. But, in terms of your heart itself, because that's really what we're talking about here, your heart. What does it do here? Dopamine is a inotropic drug. Did you know that? I don't think you did. Okay, so... <laughs> Dopamine is your inotropic drug as well. It helps forceful contractions from the heart. Dopamine. Dope. Isn't that dope, man? That's dope. So dopamine helps that forceful contraction. Dig is also an inotropic drug, but dig is in terms of atrial fibrillation specifically, as well as specif specifically focusing on that atrial kick, okay? For your dopamine, all we're trying to do is perfuse your body. So we're bringing all that blood back, that vasopressor is the classification it's under. We're pressing on the veins, bringing all that blood back to the heart, and that heart now has to push all that oxygenated blood out to the rest of the body, okay? We usually give dopamine if someone is very, very um, hypotensive, too little blood pressure. So what we're trying to do is give oxygen to the body. And I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. <laughs> Your body runs on oxygen. The only reason your body's alive is because of oxygen. Oxygen is the money of the economy of the body. Without oxygen, you are broke and you're dead. So if you have a low blood pressure, low oxygen, not gonna make it. So dopamine tries to get that blood pressure a little higher so that oxygen can get around your body. Now, I got an email from a nurse in Switzerland. She tore me to shreds. What do you mean pressure equals oxygen? Pressure does not equal perfusion. If you have a hypertensive patient, you're not gonna have hyperperfusion. I'm not saying that, all right? <laughs> We're just talking about hypoperfusion, hypotension. Cool? All right. So dopamine, is a inotropic, inotropic drug, okay? 
It also increases your heart rate. Really, it does. So, you just thought that all the drugs were negative chronotropic, didn't you? Well, actually, um, dopamine will increase your heart rate. Why do we want to increase the heart rate? Think about it. Hypoperfusion, hypo-oxygen. We're increasing your, um, your uh, blood pressure. We're increasing the oxygen. We need to increase the amount of oxygen in those hemoglobin cells, those red blood cells, in the vessels. So we're trying to get that heart to pump out oxygen. So we're increasing the rate. Cool, right? And it is, well, that's all I got for that. Okay. So it's increasing the um, heart rate itself. Now, how is dopamine different than epinephrine? Are they the same things? Or are they totally different? Well, let's break it down here. Epinephrine is pretty much, uh, has the same kind of qualities. We can say that they're best friends in a sense, okay? Because epinephrine will have a positive chronotropic, I'm sorry, positive inotropic effect in terms of helping that heart contract. It also has a positive chronotropic effect in increasing the rate of your heart. But we know that epinephrine, other, word, other term for adrenaline, is a sympathomimetic. Just it, it mimics the sympathetic nervous system. So fight and flight, we're bringing up your, um, your response. We're increasing the heart rate. We're trying to get the blood to the lungs, to the heart, and to the brain. But we're doing it in a different way. We're not putting pressure directly on the vessels. We're giving your body a kind of like a hormone, like adrenaline. And we're stimulating that fight and flight response so that that's a different route that we can go into in terms of bringing the heart rate up and contracting the heart more forcefully. It's almost like um, if you're locked out of your house or you're locked out of your car, you locked your keys in your car and you need to get in. You need to get into your house. You can use the front door, you can use the back door, you can use the garage door, you can use the basement door, but really, we're just trying to do the same thing. We're trying to get into the house, right? So, whether we're trying to decrease the blood pressure, decrease the heart rate, we can do it with one of our A, B, and C drugs. If we're trying to increase the heart rate, increase the pressure, increase the perfusion, we can do it with one of these drugs, guys. So that's really the biggest difference is we're not all going through the same door. There's multiple routes of getting the job accomplished. But your nursing instructors, they want you to know the different routes, right? Just like uh, if you had a kid that rode the bus home from school and was constantly locked out of the house, you want your child to get into the house and know the different ways of getting into the house. It's the same, same accomplishment, just different routes of accomplishing the same goal.